So since we already had it, I thought we'll do a quick unboxing of the uh, switch itself. So just and the reason yet again why I went with this switch. It's a very affordable managed uh, five port switch. Very simple. Let's see where this goes. There we go. You got your installation guide as always. You get one of those. Then you got the switch itself. You got the five gigabit connections. You got the marking on the top. Uh, you got your Kensington lock, a reset button, and a DC input. Five volts, one zero point six amps. So you could probably run it off a USB if you wanted to. You also have this Elm uh, wall mounting, so you can mount it upright or to this side. In the box, we also get some rubber feet, power connection or a power a power supply, and an installation guide. And this is basically hooking your cables uh, like that. And it doesn't take PoE, uh, that's what it says. So one thing I wanted to check in this is actually if there's a if there is something in the manual that talks about the configuration. Yeah, and this says how this ex basically explain explains how you do the uh, initial setup. Uh, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna check into my workstation and do this. But yeah, that's the switch. So I said. Very simple. Now uh, let's get to installing this. So, welcome back. We're now in my uh, workstation again. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the configuration tree of the uh, TP-Link switch, the TLSG105E, the one I got on the screen right here. There's uh, actually two ways to, to be doing this or to go about it. Um, the first way is obviously through the uh, web GUI. Uh, you could also do it through TP-Link's um, uh, own software. Uh, but we're going to do it from the web GUI and we're going to check out the software afterwards. But if you want to you download the software, you go into TP-Link, you go, can go into the Switch, uh, the Switch's uh, product site right here. And you go under support and you will find it right here. You're going to choose the version, this should be on your Switch. And this is the uh, easy smart configuration utility. You got the data sheets, the installation guides, and all this kind of stuff. You can go about this. You can also go to tplink.com slash uh, support, I believe. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. And you search for the switch, basically. So you go, um, oh, yeah, you go TLSG105E. You'll find it the same way. Now, if you want to do the configuration in the uh, web GUI, uh, you have to go into the IP of the switch. Um, and there's two ways to be doing this. The first, of course, being uh, if, your, uh, route, if your router has a, a, an active DHCP server, which uh, most of you probably have, uh, the switch will be assigned an IP. And as long as you're on the same uh, subnet as that uh, IP, you can just go through the browser. Uh, if you're not on the same subnet, you're going to have to set your computer in the IPv4 settings to be on the same subnet. Uh, and this is the same as if you don't have an active DHCP server, uh, your route, your switch will be assigned the IP address 192.168.0.1. Uh, so if you are, for, for example, on uh, you're using the subnet 10.10.10. Uh, .10 whatever, uh, you're gonna have to change it uh, so you're on the subnet 192.168. Uh, so uh, so you're on the same subnet. What I did was, uh, I'm using the, the very standard subnet 192.168.1. whatever. Uh, so what I did was I went into my edge router and I assigned the switch a static IP from uh, from the get-go. And if you're using static IP, static IP uh, configuration or static IP mapping of your network, I, I recommend doing this right away. I just did that, uh, restarted the switch and everything was Fine. So what we're going to do is now go into the switch and uh, I assign this the IP 192.168.1.1012. So we'll go in there. Here uh, you get me. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if I even learned to speak during kindergarten. Well, I didn't go to kindergarten. So you're greeted by the login screen. So what you do is you use the uh, original credentials, which is admin. And the password is extremely complicated. It is all also admin. Yeah. You uh, immediately is prompted to change your password, which is recommended. So you go ahead and do that. Put in a password. 
here we go you're now in your um, in the configuration of the uh, router or the switch actually not the router of course you can now assign it a name from the get-go and i'm gonna actually go ahead and change that and i recommend that you do as well if you have uh, have a special uh, schematics of your network uh, since i already have one of these switches i'm just gonna name it uh, the the base name dot two basically apply operation successful we have now rebanded ourselves it's a good start you can also see the mac address the ip uh, the subnet mask of course and all that kind of stuff default gateway standard stuff so in the left hand corner we have the uh, options that you are able to change the first one obviously system info you can see the same thing as we saw under ip settings you have the ip settings assigned from the router uh, dhcp setting is enabled the router uh, actually uh, addresses this as an ip setting uh, since we gave it this address it, you can change this of course you can just go and disable and apply like this it'll work the same uh, what this means is the switch will not receive any um, DHCP uh, updates. So if you uh, from so if you do any changes from the right the router right now, and you go into your switch, you won't get in. If you change the IP, um, it will have assigned another IP, and if you assign this to something else, uh, the switch will not be able to find itself. But you can do this. I'm just going to keep it on enable because it doesn't matter. Here we go. So it gets its uh, IP from the router and I'll control the IP config uh, configuration from the router itself. Here you can turn the LEDs on and off. You could use your account. Uh, the account of course is admin and you can change the password here. We already did that, uh, but if you want to do it again, you can do it right here. System tools, you got, um, if you make uh, a lot of changes to the, to the switch, you know, you have the, the IP changes, you, you lock certain ports and that kind of stuff. You can back up your config. So if anything goes wrong, if your switch dies and you get a new one, you can just upload it again. Uh, so here, if anything goes wrong, you can back up your config and restore it. System reboot, of course, if you change anything, you want to reboot it. System reset, this will uh, default back to the factory settings. And firmware upgrade, this is always uh, something you're going to want to do from the get-go. And um, while we're in here, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this step. So we're back on the product page. You go on the support. So what's actually interesting here is the V5 uh, is already shipped with the last update, it seems, because if you choose the V4, for example, uh, it has the firmware alternative right here. And uh, mine does not. But the firmware for the V4 is from 2018. And uh, the firmware on my Switch, if we go back here, is from 2019. So I guess this is the latest firmware. They don't seem to update it that often. So we'll just skip through that. Uh, to get out of this, you have to abort it. We're going to do that. Restarting the device again. Shouldn't do this because it's fun. Um, could be bad. Well, could be. The amount of time I spent waiting for devices to restart it took too long to respond. Well, I guess we F5 then. And we'll have to log in again, which is good. We can test our new password. Okay, so we've been here and uh, let's go into switching. So we're now in the port settings. In here, you can change the status of the ports, you can change what speeds and that kind of stuff. If you want to limit them or upgrade them, you can do that. IGMP snooping um, is basically a way to prioritize traffic, I think. If you have like one port, uh, you can decide if it's supposed to... Basically, it's, it's so that the port does not send out traffic that the recipient, the, um, rec the receiving client has not uh, asked for, basically. It's, I think it could be useful for like denying uh, DDoS attacks and that kind of stuff. Lag, link aggregation, if you can, you can group ports to, you can group ports to, you know, uh, extend the traffic um, speeds and that kind of stuff. Be able to, to send more traffic with, via two ports instead of one to the same uh, client. So then we have the monitoring tab. Here you have the port statistics. You can see um, packet failing and that kind of stuff. Port mirror, that's basically what, what it says. You can, you can uh, mirror traffic to different ports to see you get the same statistics on different ports. Um, it could be useful for troubleshooting and that kind of stuff. You got a built-in cable test. 
it's what it is. You can test cables. You plug it into the switch, you plug it into the recipient, you test the cable, and uh, you can see. Loop prevention to prevent uh, network looping, basically. Here is the VLAN tab, and uh, now I'm not really a network engineer, so I shouldn't be that. Um, I shouldn't try to explain this really, but I'll do my best. Uh, MTU VLAN, I think that is when you have you can have multiple ports being the the uplinks. You can have one for for instance, you can have one being the uplink, two or three be the the, the outgoing traffic for that port, and the four can be the uplink for the fifth port. So you have dual uplinks, and um, you create different VLANs that way. So you can have multiple routers going through the same switch. I think basically. Basically, this is just different ways of doing uh, not the same thing, but the, the realm of same things. You, you you prioritize and tag traffic to different ports. Port-based port VLAN is basically what it sounds like. It's so hard-coding VLANs to ports. Basically, you can put in your VLAN ID and uh, uh, put in a rule that this uh, member, uh, this port should be a member of that VLAN. 802.1Q VLAN is... Um, yeah, this is, all, this is kind of a virtual uh, virtualization. I, uh, it's not word. It's uh, creating virtual VLANs with tight and untied traffic. Um, it's also a way, I think, to to prioritize what ports sends what kind of traffic uh, and what kind of VLANs. I think one or two one Q PVID setting. This, yeah, this is kind of. I think it's when you have if you have a port and you want to, for example, have a printer uh, or a VCR or something, and um, and you want to have that that printer receive traffic from only one kind. You, you want this port should only um, get like printer information. You can you can tag it, but so that the uh, that the information that comes in and it goes out to this specific port uh, is only this kind of traffic basically. So it only receives um, printer traffic, and if any others comes in and want to go out in that port, it pro it gets removed by the switch basically. I think that's what it is. And of course, you have the quality of service here. You can uh, set it as you want to. Uh, set some bandwidth control if you want to limit some ports to different. If, you, for example, you want to have, you have a limited supply. You run a small, small business uh, of I don't know video creation, and uh, everyone can only be assigned a, a certain amount of traffic, so that you don't flood the network with everyone just trying to. Um, uh, to upload at the same time. So so this one is prioritized. You always get this much traffic and that kind of stuff, I think. Storm control. Actually have no idea what that is. Storm control functions allow the switch to monitor broadcast packets, multicast packets and UL frames, unknown unicast frames in a network. If the transmission rate of the packets exceeds the set rate, the packets will be automatically discarded to avoid network broadcast storm. Huh. What do you know? So the last thing I wanted to show you was just go back to this um, uh, to the to the switch side and and show you the easy smart configuration utility which t uh, Tplink so uh, gladly calls it. And what this is, it's it's their uh, integrated software to, to handle configuration straight from the desktop instead of via the web GUI. And yeah, there we go. Click next, choose a path. Click next and just install. Finish like the country here we go and uh, as you can see right here this is actually kind of interesting uh, this is the configurator of uh, this is how the configurator looks when it's online and this shows my uh, two switches uh, now this is interesting this shows my base switch showing up as 192.168.8 so what we're gonna do we're gonna go into this and uh, change the base IP so it knows what IP it's on we have a task that's great here we go. So it's set to this IP for some reason. Oh, I d oh, I see now. I disabled DHCP. Uh, this is actually what happened. I disabled DHCP. So this hasn't been able to receive a new address from my from my router. <laughs> this is actually really funny. So what we're gonna do instead? We're just gonna enable this. I'm gonna cancel it. And restart. We're gonna enable this, which we don't seem to be able to. Oh, I think we need to log in first. Let's see. God damn it. God damn it. Are you for real? Yeah. I reset to this switch when I moved and I haven't fixed it. We're going to have to fix this right away. Let's log into this. Here we go. We're in the... Um, 
you have the same options here, uh, but from like the um, like the web GUI, you just on a different setting. And this is actually kind of nice. We're gonna want to go into the system. We're gonna want to go into user accounts, and we're gonna put in this password, and we're gonna put in another password here. Here we go. Click apply. Yes, that's great. So we're back at the uh, screen here. So everything's good. This is how it works. It shows the IPs, it shows the MAC addresses and everything. Now we can DDoS me to hell. Um, yeah, and it uh, immediately when we enable the setting uh, for, um, uh, for DHCP server requests, it updated the IP here to 107, which is the assigned IP I have for my router. So that's great. Everything works. But as you can see, it also, since I was on the same subnet, all my units are on this subnet, uh, or all my devices, um, it, the switch still worked. It, it set it to one, uh, zero 01, which isn't assigned in my tree because I start all my IPs at 1. Now you know that as well. That's probably bad to say. So, this is it. This is the utility. Now I refreshed it for no apparent reason. Now over to the studio.